Welcome to Polish with Ray. I'm Rachel and today I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite gray nail polishes. Before we get started, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to see what my favorite grays are. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss out on future uploads. So I'm very excited to be continuing this series and we're doing grays next. If you didn't see the video that came before this one, I did share my favorite whites. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it up in the card. But I kind of wanted to knock out these more wintry shades first and to me white gray black Those are shades that I Prioritize wearing in the winter time. I just feel like with the gloomy kind of overcast grayed out weather They are perfect for the season. I actually didn't have the hardest time choosing my favorite grays I like gray polish and I love the color gray in general. I wear it all the time but I feel like there are so many other colors that are better suited for my skin tone. It's just not the most flattering, so I don't buy a ton of grays. That being said, I don't have a lot, but those that I do have, I really, really love. So we're gonna take a look at my 10 favorites, check out bottle shots, and I'm gonna show you swatch photos as well. We'll start off with mainstreams first. My first pick is Zoya Dove. Zoya Dove is a mid-toned, slightly warm leaning gray cream. So I'm making it a priority to include just some of my favorite cream colors as part of my top 10. When I compare this to some of my indie favorite grays, this one does pale a little bit in comparison. Although I love creams, I mostly use them as pedicures or under toppers. But if you are looking for a gray cream, this one is my favorite one. It's got a great formula, fully opaque in two coats. I do have the Z wide brush in here. I put it in all my Zoyas. But it's just really easy to work with and I feel like this shade of gray is very agreeable. It looks great underneath a variety of toppers. It's not too light, it's not too deep and dark, it's just dusty and fabulous. And then the other mainstream gray in this top 10 comes from OPI. It's called Engagement to Be. This one is a gray Crelly and it actually has a slightly warmer lean to the color, the base color, compared to Zoya Dove. So yeah, this one is a borderline taupe shade, and when you build it up in three coats, it does blur your nail line quite a bit, but it doesn't reach full opacity. It is more of a crelly, jelly leaning formula. I actually wore this recently for the first time, so I felt a little bit hesitant putting it in my favorites, but I loved it so much, I can't get it out of my mind, and I can't wait to see what else I can pair it with. In the photos I'm sharing with you, I have it paired with KB Shimmer Take It or Leaf It, which is a flaky, shifty topper. And I use this as a jelly sandwich. So I did a layer of engagement to be, then a layer of KB Shimmer Take It or Leaf It, the OPI, the KB Shimmer on top. And I just felt like with two coats of the OPI, I got a decent amount of blur on my nail line. It canceled out some of the staining that I had on my nails. I always love that. And it didn't really look super gray on my nails. Because I have a little bit of staining, it kind of just made like a cooler, more neutral, nudie color, but it didn't look like a stark gray, and I really like that. Okay, I was wrong. I have one more mainstream gray favorite. This one, maybe some of you will argue that it's not a gray. It's not entirely, it's a taupe. It's Essie Chinchilli. Chinchilli is a taupe, kind of purpley, pink, very warm leaning grayish brown cream. It's a taupe. <laughs> so this one doesn't really fit into my grays, but if I put it with my browns, I wouldn't feel like it belonged there either. Definitely couldn't put it with my purples and pinks. So I decided to put it in with my grays because that's where I felt like it fit best. I've only worn this a couple times, but I loved it both times. Something about this just feels warm and cozy to me. It had a fantastic formula. I believe I have the, yes, the newer, really nice Essie paddle brush in there. And so it was fully opaque in two coats. Very, very easy to work with formula. And just was such a classy color. Like when I think of gray, I think of class. And this was very, very classy. And now I'm finding myself just staring at it and wanting to add it to my winter rack. <laughs> 
On to indie favorites now. I've got a lot of indie favorites. The first one doesn't look super gray either, so maybe I'm like fudging this a little bit, but we're gonna go with it. It is KB Shimmer Glazed and Confused. Glazed and Confused looks like it has a white base, but I looked it up and it said a gray leaning curly base. So I put it with the grays, <laughs> but it could have been right at home with my favorite whites too. It's got kind of like a grayish white curly base and lots of gorgeous shifting flakes that shift red to copper to gold to green to blue and purple at extreme angles. So many shifts. This is a polish that I've worn quite a few times. I can't get enough of it. The neutrally base makes it feel work appropriate it makes it feel like a neutral like a palette cleanser i guess but those flakes just give you so much color shift that it feels fun so if you're someone who has to wear like neutral shades to work or you've got a more serious event to go to i think this would be the perfect choice and it's one that i feel like would be perfect for many different seasons. I've worn it around the holidays before. I've worn it in the summertime. It'd be gorgeous in the spring. And where it has a more warm leaning gray base, I think it'd be amazing in the fall too. I actually wore this polish and I feel like anytime you pick to wear a polish for a specific event, it's like, cemented in your memory and in your heart. This is actually the polish that I chose to wear when I had my maternity photo shoot um, last year. The year before oh my gosh two years ago and i just picked it because it's neutral it's agreeable it looks great with every color it's a beautiful polish this one's still available as well i will by the way leave any of these polishes that are linked down in the description box so you can shop the next one is also maybe arguably a little bit more blue than it is gray but i'm gonna consider it a gray <laughs> it is nailed it's magical menagerie magical menagerie has a blue leaning gray base in my opinion not by description i haven't looked up the description <laughs> i probably should with a ton of super shifty flakes it's packed with them and they are every color of the rainbow so i am an absolute sucker for nailed it flaky they just they do them so well Somehow they manage to pack their polishes with lots and lots of flakes, but they don't take forever to dry down. They build up really well. You can still see the base color all while getting all of the shift and color from those flakes. I really liked how this one had such stark contrast between the warm tones that you see in the flakes. It's mostly gold and green. There is a little bit of blue and purple in there too though, but that contrast between the warm yellow and green tone of the flakes and the cool iciness of that grayish blue base. I love it. Like it just feels like a winter wonderland on the nails. Another top pick comes from Cuticula and it is Beyond the Veil. So I just looked up the description for this Cuticula and it's actually described as having a soft milky white base. Oops. <laughs> But I swear, it looks more gray than glazed and confused in some of my other choices, so I'm going to keep it. Um, it's described as being a soft milky white with holographic flakes, iridescent shifting flakes, chrome shifting flakes, and rainbow iridescent shifting glitter. So Beyond the Veil is one that I've worn by itself. I've also worn it as part of a Skittle, and it never lets me down. Uticula flakes are perfection and the flakes in here just are so shifty again we get some incredible contrast between those flakes and the glitters and that whitish gray base and i think that's pretty much that's pretty much how i like to wear my grays i love for my grays to have some kind of bright vibrant contrast in them so that they don't feel quite so gloomy um and this one i don't think anyone could say beyond the veil feels gloomy the flakes really just bring it to life and it's amazing the next polish is from fair maiden polish which is not a brand anymore um, and it's a shade called luke periwinkle luke periwinkle has a gray base it's kind of like a mid-toned gray base and really glowy shifting shimmer that shifts blue to purple to pink and holographic flakes so this polish when i thought favorite grays instantly came to mind it's one that lives rent free in my head all the time like i wake up in the middle of the night and i'm like i need to wear luke periwinkle <laughs> 
And I think that's so interesting because I swatched it a long time ago. It released in 2021 and I have not reworn it, but maybe once. But it is a fabulous polish and every time I see it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got to wear that. But I just don't. So I'm going to add it to my winter rack in hopes that I get to, to it again this season. But I don't know what it is about this polish that just takes my breath away. The base color is pretty, but like the shimmer is so glowy. It just takes over the entire polish. And y'all know how I feel about hollow flakes. So the shimmer paired with those holographic flakes, it gives me shift. It gives me sparkle. I am all about it. The next one is a little bit similar to that Luke Periwinkle polish, and I contemplated not including both of them in the video, but I had to because I love them so much. This one's from Bees Knees Lacquer, and it's I Will Devour All of You. I Will Devour All of You has a little bit of a warmer leaning gray base. It's packed with holographic flakes, and then it's got shift from blue to aqua to purple. This is one I've reached for several times since watching. I've got a big collection, so that always says a lot. And this is the one polish I think out of this release that I pretty much will exclusively wear in winter. The shifts in here, the blue and the purple, the aqua, with all those hollow flakes, it just feels icy and snowy in the best way. I hate ice and snow, but I like them in this polish. <laughs> the shifts are incredible. It builds up to opacity in three coats, and I just... I adore when Bees Knees does this finish because they load their polishes with hollow flakes. Luke Periwinkle is beautiful and maybe I'll insert like a side-by-side -side video, but you can see it doesn't have nearly the amount of holographic flakes that the Bees Knees has. And I just, I love that extra sparkle. Another Bees Knees Lacquer made it to this top 10 and it's Bees Knees Lacquer Holiday Cheermeister. Holiday Cheermeister has a soft gray base. I guess you can tell that's the kind of gray I prefer is like a mid-tone gray, not a super dark charcoal, not a really light almost white, but mid-toned. Um, <laughs> I have a type. Mid-tone gray base, holographic flakes, and then multi-chrome flakes that shift copper to gold to green to blue. This is another one I've reached for several times since swatching. I think I've worn it three or four times now. And when you have a collection as big as mine, that speaks volumes. I just really love the contrast. I feel like a broken record, but the contrast between that mid-tone cray base and the pop that those flakes give, they are so loud and intense. And I don't usually like multi-chrome flakes or ultra chameleon chrome flakes. <laughs> I always have a hard time saying that, uh, but they just work in this polish. Bees Knees Lacquer makes these flaky crawlies so well. I would love to see them do more of them. Some of my favorite Bees Knees Lacquers are their flaky crawlies. They're just beautiful. And then I feel like the hollow flakes in here are just, they're the finishing touch. The sprinkles on top of the cupcake, they just add a little bit of extra sparkle it works. My last two favorite grays both come from Wildflower Lacquer. The first one is, isn't this a glittering sea of hopeful faces? This one has a really warm, darker gray base. It's actually got the darkest base of any polish that I've shown you in today's video. And it has holographic flakes as well as like I don't know, they feel oceanic. Oceanic, kind of glass-like flakes that shift green to blue to purple to pink. This polish is so unique. It's another one that lives rent-free in my head. I haven't worn it the most. It's like Luke Periwinkle. I haven't worn it the most, but this one is one I just can't shake. I can't get it out of my head. And I think it's, again, that contrast. It just gets me every time. The warmth and the gray base, it's just such an interesting shade of gray. It almost feels a little bit brown. The sparkle created by those hollow flakes and the shift in those beautiful iridescent flakes, it just feels like a winter unicorn storm. This one I think actually would be so pretty transitioning from winter to spring because it's got both components. The base color looks a little bit muddy and snowy and dreary, but the flakes just add a brightness and give this polish so much life. And the final polish in my top 10 comes from Wildflower Lacquer. It's one I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It's called Moonstone. Moonstone has a gray base. It's got shimmer that shifts blue to aqua to purple, and it is so ethereal. So Moonstone is a cult classic. It's only been out for a few years, but it was one of Wildflower Lacquer's most loved polishes, so much so that the maker had to re-release the polish over and over every single month and it sold out every single month. 
I think she restocked it for over a year and just said, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> um, and stopped, but it was popping people everybody wanted their hands on this and for good reason it is so glowy like the shimmer is so intense that it doesn't even feel gray like i had to stop myself and look up a d the description for this because i was not sure if it belonged in the blue category because just the blue shimmer is so loud that it makes the polish look blue sometimes i will say that this one did not build up to full opacity i could still see quite a bit of nail line even though my nails aren't super long when i applied this in three coats most of the time that would be a deal breaker for me but in this case it was not this polish is so gorgeous i did not care <laughs> So those are my favorite grays in my collection. Let me know down in the comments which of these were your favorites. Do you have any of them in your collection? If not, what are some of your favorite grays? I will link anything that is still available down in the description box, and hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!